Okay. All right, we're recording. So hello, this is Quisha, Tanya, Hi. Cynthia, and Abby. Hi. Back with another video here. Today we're going to be talking about more current events, more things going on, and how we feel about it, how we think other Americans feel about it, and some possible solutions. So who would like to start the conversation off? Well... No one. I started out first last time. Okay, so well, one thing we said we're gonna talk about some current things are going on. So we know like every day in the news and in the social media world, we're updated with um uh things basically by the minute. And we last time we were in the video, we were talking about like defunding the police department. Mm -hmm. Funding. I mean, and refunding, redistributing how funds are uh, distributed through communities. I saw something on Facebook when I was looking up some information about it, about how, how the defunding of the police departments will work. Because a lot of people just thought it meant, oh, just don't fund the police department anymore. And we know that that can lead into mayhem because you know they are there to serve and protect in a you know perfect world or in a, what is supposed to be as a police department but i was reading that defunding doesn't mean don't give them any money it means cut their budgeting mm -hmm. because um they have a lot a large budget they have like the i think the cut was 1.7 million so if you're cutting out 1.7 million how much did you start with I think one police department was like a, a billion dollar budget. Maybe that was New York. I'm not sure which police department it was. But they're trying to do like a nationwide budget cut for the police department and refund the, the communities around them into businesses, into um, schools in the area, different things, different programs and stuff like that. What do you guys think about those ideas? I think that sounds pretty good. Mm hmm I agree. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a good thing to like basically take some of that money and put it back into in the into the community. I mean, um, I don't know that they had that big amount of money. Maybe. Um, um, I mean, would that would that I wonder if that would like limit like hiring more police officers? Would that like bring it down to like a minimum of, of hiring anybody else? I don't, so, I don't know. That's a good question. So I think I don't know how that would affect that part. Like, would they be like not be able to like hire any more police officers? Would well, they like cut back on police officers being hired? I don't know. I don't know. It seemed like they have a court. Like, like would, it seemed like they have more than enough officers with all the officers we saw out there doing the protest. They have more than enough, probably too many officers. Yeah, I think it depends on probably in the area that you that one lives. I don't, I'm not sure if we have too many. I know back a couple of years ago we didn't have enough. We didn't have enough. So, so I know my cousin. I was talking to her about it, and he, she was saying that if they defund the police department, we gonna have a purge. But I don't believe we gonna have a purge. Purge? No, I think that people just have a misconception of what defunding means. It means just take some of the money that's in like places that are not necessary in the police department and reallocating it into the community. Like, I don't know how much base police officers make, but just like in, in some, some like businesses, how like the head of the company makes a ton of money and then mm -hmm. everybody else. So maybe it, it's like pay cuts for people who are like above a certain pay grade or, um, pushing for retirement for people that are at retirement age, maybe one of the things that they they do to help, you know, be able to put funds somewhere else. I don't think that is going to necessarily mean that we're going to have a purge or anything like that. I think that I've, I think that there's money in the police department that is not necessarily governed correctly or put in the right places that they're trying to take that out and put it in places that'll be more beneficial. I don't right. think they're trying to get rid of the police. 
They're just, just trying to be smarter with the money. They're probably just trying to put a cap on the salary, maybe a cap. Yeah, like it. a salary mm-hmm. cap. Yeah. Or like I know we I've worked with the police before on like some community building type of stuff, and they've had budgets, certain type of budgets, and mm-hmm. maybe they want to cut down on those type of budgets because sometimes that money just be like. Right. What goes into like their budget? Like what? Why do you need that much? Like what do you put into it? That's my question. Right. And I think that's the question that a lot of um, states or cities and communities are asking too. Like why you need this much money when this can go towards, you know, I know personally in Chicago, I live in Chicago, schools here need funding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, books please. in Chicago public schools are horrible. They're old editions of, of books that are far behind suburban schools and, and charter schools and private schools. Like Chicago public schools need funding. Yeah. Yes. Last, what, like two years ago, they had to close down so many public schools because of, they didn't have the money, they didn't have the funding. And where that meant that those kids who went to those schools had to go to another public school, which means what? The classrooms are now overcrowded. Overcrowded. Yes. 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 And then they have one teacher and they don't have like if a, a child is having difficulties, they don't have another te- They need to have at least two or three teachers in a large mm-hmm. class like that to help the children that are having difficulties in certain areas like like math, reading and English. Yeah, or or not even even children that have like social emotional difficulties. Mm-hmm. Having someone that can actually pay attention to you and attend to you can help with those in the classroom too. So yes. funding for schools is a great way to put money money from other places that is not necessarily needed. Because I witnessed it firsthand. I didn't go to Chicago public schools, but my kids, some of my kids went to schools and then I have worked with the schools through, you know, um, volunteering and different things like that and different organizations, partnering with them through different organizations and seeing myself like they don't have, like you said, they don't have teachers. They don't have, they don't even have teachers assistants. Even if you can't get two teachers in the classroom, they don't even have TAs. They don't even have uh para pro para professionals for like te- uh, like uh, special education or anything. Yeah, that's like? what that's like a TA. Yeah. They they need need that. Wow. Right. No, oh, they just not. Yeah. Just not they don't even have money to have um what is what's called enrichment, which is like music, art, PE, all those things. They don't have the money to pay someone to come in and do that, or to even get like instruments to have mm-hmm. a music class or different things like. So I'm all for the refunding of the money. Because yeah. right, like, why do they need millions of dollars like that? In I addition know. to the money that they are getting paid in their salary, because that's separate from the from that other billions or that millions of dollars that they are getting for their department. They don't need my, that money. From my experience. More policing does not mean less crime. Yes, you're right. Mm-hmm. And just because you have more police on your force or you have more police presence in a community doesn't mean it's going to have less crime. Chicago, a prime example of that. It's all about building up the community and the minds of the people in the community so that they will want something better for themselves. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because yeah. in Chicago, as we know, yeah. 40 people got shot in one weekend. So what, wow. what type of different um, ways do you think, we already said like school would be a good place to put the money. What other areas would be a good place to fund? I think they can have that like, bring back the YMCA so that mm-hmm. the kids will have somewhere to go and things to do. Yeah, they need they need more recreation. Right, recreation. they have closed down so many YMCA's. They need to bring that back. Is the YMCA publicly funded, or is it? Do we know if it's publicly or privately funded? I don't know if it's publicly it's a good funded, but I know we don't have we don't have as many as YMCA's as we did. We don't have many like boys and girls club the way we did. Like a lot of those places have closed down. And then if you were to open those places back up, 
there, there could be like some like some of that money can go to like some, some donations to help people who can't afford to the, send their kids there. They, they possibly can. Mm-hmm. Like maybe you want dance class or something like that. They have a fund for their people to help to, like, to do acting, fun, you know, drama, a dancing, swim, basketball. Yeah. Put it into a funding where people can like financially help those who can't can't pay for it or it you keeps some like of the trouble kids off the street. You know what they need have to so do. much killing and stuff. They need and to then, all the potholes too. Yeah, and then open yes. up and then open up something for the uh the, the adolescents because you know most these uh park districts and stuff like that. If your kid get a certain age, they, you know, they're not even like they don't have any programs for like the older kids, the teenagers. They don't have any programs for them. When you get like 13 years yes. old, it's like impossible to see kids anywhere. 13, 15, they have nothing for them to do in the summertime. Nothing. Right. So they right. Need money totally good because I think kid, older kids need something to do just as well as the little kids. Right. Mm-hmm. I think the older kids probably need more to do. Yeah. I think the little kids is more so the parents can have child care and something to for them to do but yes. the older kids i think is to they need more to do so they can regulate their minds not right. get into to, to trouble or dangerous situations and be able to have something to focus on when i i found that when you give people responsibility they like to carry that yeah right because the idle mind they, all they're gonna do is just you know to get that mind is idle they're just gonna find trouble and get into more trouble Find something to do that's not productive, you know? I think that's a good idea, putting the money, putting that money into the kids. I think in schools, I think that's a phenomenal idea. And I, and I heard a police officer uh, on, on Facebook, it was this one, he was really irate and really angry. He said, stop treating us like animals. Like, really? The mm. message should be stop treating on on um. Uh, black and brown people like animals. That's what they message should have been. How are they being treated like animals? I guess everybody have their own opinion, but then it is, you know, everyone should be treated as equal. Everyone should be treated like a person. Everyone, right. you know. Well, they ain't had no comment about how George Floyd was treated. He yeah. was treated like an animal. Yeah. Lynched in the street like a dog. Well, ho- well hopefully, you, you know, we'll, this protest will continue on and we'll make a difference. Do y'all think that this weather that we have and this tropical storm like weather is going to affect any planned protests for this week? Because it's supposed to be kind of windy and um, stuff for the next couple of days. I don't think it probably will. I think people will prepare themselves for it. They know that it's here. They'll probably prepare themselves and they're um, very anxious and they want to get out there and protest. They will. I don't think it's going to stop me. There's many, but they still get out there. Yeah. Yeah, people probably put their raincoats, umbrellas, and whatever they need and just go ahead. Because you figure figure if the uh, COVID didn't stop them, then why would the weather stop them? Yeah. 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 True. Yeah. True. I just looked it up. The YMCA is not federally funded. Um, okay. It does it ha, it gets it does receive some grant money, like they apply for some grants, hmm. and it receives local funding. So I'm guessing like local funding. I don't know. That could also be a place to put it from the police department as well. Maybe that's why a lot of YMCA's are closing down because they're not federally funded. They rely on. Um, what are the people called? Donations and sponsors and stuff like that. Yeah. And wow. People may not be doing that as much. I used to be a member of a Y and I loved it. Me and my children, we loved it. Glen yeah. Ellen, Glen Ellen YMCA. Yeah, that's awesome. Glen Ellen is nice. I taught, taught my children how to swim. And and the prices are reasonable when you go to the YMCA. Like these other places, they hijack the prices. And what I people may not know. Kind of- can't afford that. Mm-hmm. What people may not know about the YMCA, for those who you know may not can may can't afford it, they also offer scholarships. So you mm-hmm. pay a discounted rate of the membership fee. You apply for a scholarship and you can get a scholarship and you pay a discounted rate. 
Oh, well, that's good. They need to bring those up. Uh, YMCA's back. Yeah. Yeah, they have they, they have some still open, but not many. I know they have one open in Berwyn, where my mom lives. My kids usually go there for the summer, and it's good because uh, the people who really don't have like money to pay, they basically uh, basically you um, they do like a payment plan for you. Some people finance, some people donate money to different families and help out with with the with their uh, payment. Yeah. So it, it works out well. Yeah, so programs like that I think would be beneficial. I think we do need to focus on more so middle age children yeah. to born in the future. Like we have a lot of stuff for younger age and they also have like job some one summer Chicago and different job things to keep them ocu- teenagers occupied during the summer and stuff. But mm-hmm. we don't the transitional age of like 10, 11, 12, 13 mm-hmm. are really really crucial to steering a child in the right way and, or them going in another way. Right. When they get to that age, mm-hmm. that's when the life starts. Puberty. Puberty yeah, hits. Puberty. That's when life starts changing for them. Friends may start changing. Ideas about the world may start changing. So I think if we're going to fund something, really, we need to... That, need, that also needs to be a group that we focus on, like middle-aged children, like in between mm-hmm. um, young between young child, early childhood and adolescence, yeah, yeah. middle childhood, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I think too, like a new category needs to be raised, like racial sensitive uh, sensitivity training. Oh yeah, I think that people in jobs of 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 high position, police officers, counselors school officials, school workers, teachers, all those people have to go through some type of racial sensitivity training. Right. So they can see perspectives of other races, not just black people, but other races, because that's what we all talking about now. Racism. Mm -hmm. So if we do all this marching and all this stuff and we're not teaching people at the end of the day, then how it, it doesn't really benefit us anything. Right. Yeah, it convert it convert right back to where it started. We didn't get nothing. We didn't learn nothing. We didn't. We train our mindset and our thoughts and our emotions toward other people. So yeah, it'd be like going backwards. Mm-mm. I hope we see a lot of positive change from this because we need to because it's 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 getting bad. Yeah, you know, it kind of like makes you like think like, like for people like like if I if I didn't have a, if I didn't have kids right now, I would really like be like second guess myself like well I don't want kids I don't want to bring kids into this world. Mm-hmm. So maybe thinking the same thing right now at this time, you know, is it really worth bringing someone in uh, into this world? I was saying that when Donald went to office. Yeah. It makes you. It makes you think. Mhm. Right. Because I know um, <clears throat> even before this happened, I worried about my son every day before he even le- when he uh, left the house to go to school. You know, because you 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 just don't know what might happen. What if he is a mistaken identity? And yeah. then the police uh, stop him and rough rough him up and and uh, uh, for no apparent reason. Like they've been breaking in all these houses, and they've been breaking in the wrong houses. Who? You know the cops. That's how Brianna got killed. They went in the wrong yeah. house. I mean, it's been going on for years. How do you get a warrant to the wrong house? Yeah, they're making careless mistakes. Yes. Yeah. That's that just, I mean, it shot her eight times while she was asleep. And, and and why would you even do that? Why would you shoot, why would you shoot anybody in their sleep? That's what I'm like. That's what I'm the person you came to get why would you shoot anybody that person in their sleep what would make you shoot anybody in their sleep 
Yeah, she was shot yeah, eight was times in her sleep. I'm just fabricating on, on that one. Crooked Cox. Crooked Cox. Yes. They need to fire them all and then fix it like they said they're going to fix it. Well, they can't go to another county and get another job because that's what they've been doing. They get fired from one county and go to another one and get a job and do the same old madness that they did at the previous county. Hmm. Mm -hmm. This brings up the question that I have then is, do you think police officers need firearms to do their job? I don't believe they do. Why could they have like a, um, one of those guns that let, let out the pellets? Yeah. yeah. What they, what they call those guns? The ones they use in the ride, the pellets. They yeah. didn't use those. You can, mess, you can mess somebody up with that, baby. You don't need no... no uh, they hit that girl in really? the face and her face was bloody. You can mess somebody up. You don't, To stop somebody, you, you, you can stop a person with that. That's all you need. Right. I, my husband and I had this discussion the other day. I was We were riding in the car and I said I think they should have a gun that has like rubber bullets or like the pepper yes. spray pellets or whatever that's what they're that's what they should have on them when they're like in their holster or stuff i do think for extreme situations that they should have a clip a magazine clip that goes into the gun that has bullets but it takes time to get that and put it in like take the other clip out put that clip so that gives you that gives you i guess a space or a time to not act so irrational yeah. Because you have to do a long process before you can get a real bullet. So if it's not a, a, a situation where someone is already shooting at you, yeah, then you can just shoot them with a rubber bullet or a pellet or that's a good know, a pepper spray. Idea. That's a really good idea. Because I the idea is just to stop the person from like yeah trying to hurt you. You're, you're nobody. That's ninety percent of the idea is to just to detain somebody, to stop them from doing whatever they're doing, yeah. to, you know, uh, you know, keep justice. There are circumstances where put people are shooting at the police first and, you know, they, it's, it could be a life or death situation. That's why I said I think they should have, a, you know, an extra clip that actually has regular bullets in it just for their own safety in those type of situations. But that also takes training. Like, when do you put your, when do you get, reach for that clip? Right. And then fire... <laughs> Is, I'm, I'm sorry, Kish. I mean, Quisha. I was um, just saying only when someone is shoot, already shooting at you do you pull that out and start shooting back. And then mm -hmm. I want to say for these cops that are always saying, oh, I feared for my life. If they that fearful and that's scary, they don't need to be cops. Because so that's what the job is entails. I mean, it, so... It, I mean, you know, you knew that's what the job was about when you got the job. So don't use that as an excuse to murder somebody, an innocent person, without a weapon on them. What do I you think? For my life. You know what I think they need to do is, so to get into the military, you go through boot camp like extensive training for months at a time. I think they need to do the same thing with the police because essentially you're putting a weapon into somebody's hand and to even do that, like you have to go through, like I said, all that training. I think they should treat it the same way. You know, I had, um, after criminal justice and I had a teacher, she was, she used to be on, be a law enforcement she said that they're trained to shoot to kill. That's what she told me. It came out of her own mouth. She said, we're trained to shoot to kill. I can not believe trained. She told me that. So she said, so naturally, that's what you're, that's what you're trained to do. That naturally, it, comes, it becomes a habit. That's what you always do. No matter if you're probably not threatened. What no matter if is to shoot to kill a black and brown people. Yeah. That's what they man said is. So that means that the training needs to change yeah. all around the board. She told me and, that. I'm like, whoa. And, and then I want to ask you, the people that push the uh, the 75-year-old uh, activist down where he cracked his skull, wasn't those uh, soldiers, th those weren't police officers, weren't they in the military? They were, um, what do they call them? Like SWAT team? 
No, they're like the National Guard. Oh, National Guard. Mm. See, uh huh. And I, because they had on a blue uniform, so I wasn't for sure if those was police officers. But you said they National Guards, and I, I just thought that was so dirty what they did to that uh to that seventy five year old man. And then and then uh, Trump is saying that he was trying to scan their radios. And he was part of Artifa. You know what's funny about that is I heard, I think yesterday, like last night um, or this morning, I saw a video. And he was arguing with protesters before that even happened. Mm -hmm. Who, the 75 y'all? Yes. Like arguing with them. About what? So somebody, uh, somebody said, and I caught it, like, the video was started recording after they were already, like, engaged in an argument. But, like, he said he was up there just for fun. And people, the protesters were getting really upset because they're like, what about this is fun? Right. Um, so they were getting into an argument. And... He, I guess, was going up to a police officer to tell them about the situation and return a helmet, and then they attacked him. Oh mm. my goodness! And then I'm like, well, well, why are they saying he was an activist? Was he an activist? No. So what? Everything Trump said was he literally contradicted himself. He was not up there to help with any protesting. He was just up there for fun, as he said. And oh. Trump is trying to say, oh, he's Antifa, blah, blah, blah. No, no he wasn't. Right. Mm. That's so sad. It's a lot of sad stuff going on in the world. And then they mm. pushed another lady down, and she's in, uh, did you see what she was violently pushed down? She had a seizure attack. What? She had a seizure attack when they violently pushed her down, the police officers. Mm. Yeah. This was on the news yesterday. I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I watch the news for purposes of speaking and doing these videos to be informed. But other than that, I don't watch news. It's like very depressing to me mm -hmm. to hear every day. New things, new, new, new people being killed by the police in different states, just different stuff. The protesters being harmed and killed and just it's so much to intake when we already have so much going on personally. I have to limit myself. If yeah. not, I'm going to be stressed out. Yes, that's true. So it's mainly for, you know, for this purpose right here, right now. Because, uh. Mainly, I, I I just listen look at the news in the morning for the weather, and then sometime a little bit before I go to bed, but not not for not for a long time because it's depressing. And and you and you may and you may and sometimes when you watch it, you may not think it affects you, but my my experience is that it didn't. I didn't think it affected me that much till the other day. I just broke down and I just started crying. Then I knew that. I was really being affected by it. But at first, I didn't think I was really being affected too much by it. But when I broke, something I heard, and I just broke down and started crying and couldn't stop crying. Then I, that's when I knew that this is like, this is too much. Because you you can, you can, you can pretend like you don't hear it and don't see it, but reality is you do. When I saw Floyd, George Floyd being lit, that is what really got to me. And I think what really hurt me the most, because I thought his mother had died a month prior to that, but his mother was deceased for two years. I didn't know she was deceased for two years, but when he cried out to his mother that was already deceased, that really hurt me deeply. It just did something to me because I knew when he did that, that they was going to kill him, that he was getting ready to die. Because don't know a grown man cry out. He cried out for his mom right before he, like they said, someone quoted his brother, I think it was. He, cried, he saw a grown man cry out to his mom right before he cried out before he died. 
Mm. Cried out that he couldn't breathe. And that that's just, I've never seen anything like that before. So that really bothered me. I mean, you see it in the movies and stuff when you see, you know, the movies about how they did the slaves and things like that. But to actually just see it on the news, that really bothered me. Yeah. It's a lot. That was heartbreaking. Yeah. I mean, that brought a tear to my eye. I feel like anyone who has empathy or um, care for the humans, that probably brought a tear for their, to their eye or, or, you know, made them feel something. It was very sad, very hard to watch. Yes. And then the girl that filmed the uh, the video, her life was being threatened after that. And she's a teenage girl. Right. Mm. And I, so if, I'm like, well, well, why are they threatening her life? And then Trump gonna try to say, well, how come they didn't try to stop? Okay, how are you gonna just try to stop four officers with guns? What was they supposed to do? She was, she's 17. How do you expect a 17 year old girl to step up and do something like that? Right, and they have guns. I mean, with live weapons. I mean, with bullets. They would have put her in jail, I'll tell you right now. Well, he won't If if she wouldn't have ended up dead as well. She would have very much ended up dead yeah. as well. Right. And they took her phone. And we would have probably never saw the video. Right. So what thing. do you what kind of message do y'all think that sends to other people who want to intervene in situations where they see racism happening in front of them or they see police brutality happening in front of them? The statements from our president and from like her life being threatened and all that stuff. What's that of a mess? See something not right, they want to intervene. Well, do you think it scares them away or do you think that makes more people want to act more? I think that makes more people want to act more. They want they I think they wanna they wanna capture whatever is being done that's not that's wrong. Uh, I, I I think they want to capture it more. You're going to see more and more. Because if it wasn't for our phone, the cops would be doing so much dirt and so much killing, which they have done for decades, and we never knew anything about it. That's the reality of it. Yeah. And you know, and the sad, and the sad part about it is they can't, they can't seem to contain themselves and stop doing it because they've been doing it so much and so often that it has become like a lifestyle for them. So even though they see the phones and see the cameras on them and videos are live and like that, they still can't contain themselves to even stop. It's just like over and they overindulged in it to the point where it's just natural for them. It's like a habit for them. Because you think yeah. you video on them, you think if they see you taping them that they will try to play it off and stop, but as you see, they can't do that. So no, he you had know a black that. heart, a black soul. No, yeah. it's he had a black do. soul. Right. They can't. Con- they can't. Con- they can't control what they do. It's like it's just, it's just rage. But you know what? They worked together for twelve years. Did y'all know that? They mm-hmm. worked together for twelve years. So they must have had some words or something. And so he probably had in his mind, if he ever encountered to him again, he was going to take him down. Because he had to know him. Anytime you work with somebody for 12 years, you know them. Yeah. Something went down when they worked together as security guards. Yeah, man. Check it out on here. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope that... Um, we just continue to make progress Me as too. a nation. Um, continue to build bridges. Continue to uplift other people and have other people uplift us. But we are coming to the end of our video. Yes. Yeah. And we want to thank everybody for watching. Please comment below anything you would like for us to talk about or any questions that you have. 
And we'll see you guys next time with another discussion, therapeutic conversation yes. about current events. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Stay safe.